Does your business buy, sell or move goods into or out of the UK? If so, this video will help you understand about exhaustion of intellectual property rights and what it means for your business. What is intellectual property? Intellectual property, or IP rights for short, are rights granted for a trademark, patent, copyright or design. Some rights require an application, such as patents, trademarks and registered designs, whereas others are automatic, such as copyright and unregistered design rights. These rights exist to protect the creative efforts of an individual or a business and gives them a monopoly or an exclusive right for a set period of time. We often refer to the owner as the rights holder and use of the IP without their permission is known as infringement. What is exhaustion of IP rights? Exhaustion of IP rights are limits placed on the rights holder's control over the distribution of their goods. So, for example, a book publisher can't prevent you from selling a book you purchased from them to another person within that territory, such as a country or economic zone. This is because the copyright would be considered exhausted. Having limits on the control of distribution of goods underpins what is known as parallel trade. In general, the exhaustion of intellectual property rights acts as a limit to rights holder monopoly control and underpins the system that allows parallel trade of certain goods. What is parallel trade? Parallel trade is the cross-border movement of goods that have already been legitimately put into the marketplace by the rights holder. In principle, once a good, such as a book, is placed on the market in a particular country or area, the IP rights are considered to be exhausted in that area. This means that the trading in these goods by others is no longer considered to infringe the rights holder's IP rights. So other businesses can move those goods around the country or area without the rights holder's permission. Parallel trade often takes place on a global, wholesale basis, and each country has its own system. This is often referred to as an exhaustion regime. Finally, it's important to note that the exhaustion of rights only applies to genuine physical goods, not counterfeit goods or purely digital content. How might parallel trade affect your business? A business wanting to parallel export goods from the UK to another country would need to check the exhaustion regime of that country. If a business wishes to parallel import goods from another country to the UK, then the exhaustion regime of the UK will need to be considered. Let's look at some different examples. Importing from the European Economic Area into the UK If you are a business wanting to parallel import goods to the UK from the European Economic Area, then currently you are able to import goods from that area. This is because the UK considers the IP rights in goods first placed on the market in that area to be exhausted. The European Economic Area comprises European Union member states, Iceland, Liechtenstein and Norway. So let's look at an example of boxes of cookies biscuits that were first put on sale in Germany. These biscuits are protected by the trademark cookies in both the European Economic Area and the UK. The rights in the UK trademark are considered exhausted as soon as the boxes of biscuits were put on the market in Germany. As a result, you will be able to parallel import any unsold boxes of these biscuits into the UK. Exporting goods from the UK to the European Economic Area If you are a business wanting to parallel export goods from the UK to the European Economic Area, you may need to obtain permission from the rights holder to do this. This is because the European Economic Area does not consider the IP rights in goods first placed on the market in the UK to be exhausted within the European Economic Area. So, let's look again at Cookies Biscuits. Because the IP rights have not been considered exhausted in the European Economic Area, if you want to parallel export some boxes that have been first placed on the market in the UK to, for example, Spain, you may need to obtain the rights holder's permission first. Otherwise, the rights holder may be able to use their IP rights to stop the goods entering Spain. Importing goods into the UK from the rest of the world If you are a business wanting to parallel import goods to the UK from any other country, not including one in the European Economic Area, 
you may currently need to obtain permission from the rights holder to do this. This is because the UK does not currently consider the IP rights in goods first placed on the market in a country outside the European Economic Area to be exhausted. So how does this change things for our cookies? If you want to parallel import some boxes that have been first placed on the market in the USA to the UK, you may need to obtain the rights holder's permission first. Otherwise, the rights holder may be able to use their UK IP rights to stop the goods entering the UK. Exporting goods from the UK to the rest of the world If you are a business wanting to parallel export goods from the UK to any other country, not including one in the European Economic Area, the onus is on you to check the exhaustion regime in that country. So, for example, if you want to parallel export some cookies that have been first placed on the market in the UK to, for example, India, you would need to check the exhaustion regime in India. Specifically, you will need to check whether the rights holder has protection in that territory in order to determine if you need to obtain their permission or not. If you are a rights holder who owns IP rights within the European Economic Area, the UK's current exhaustion regime allows you to stop the parallel export of your goods that have been first placed on the market in the UK moving to the EEA. So, what have we learnt? Regardless of where you are or what your nationality is, it is important to consider where the goods have IP protection, the direction of travel of those goods, and the countries the goods are moving between. For more information, please visit gov.uk.